close analysis by Italian researchers has revealed the ends are broken and chipped from use. Molte cose ci ha raccontato questa unghia, eh, molte di più di quelle che ci aspettavamo per la verità. Stress generalizzati e che perdurano per un certo periodo di tempo possono produrre un break, un assottigliamento, un arresto della crescita ungueale. È molto interessante vedere che 60, 80 e 120 giorni prima della morte di quest'uomo vi sono delle linee di ipoplasia dell'unghia. Questo ripetersi in sequenza di, di fenomeni di stress depone in favore del fatto che quest'uomo era affetto da una malattia generalizzata, ricorrente, grave ed anche fatta di episodi sufficientemente lunghi da rimanere registrati. The Iceman's health has been a big question since the beginning and he has regularly been taken out of his fridge for tests. The X-rays revealed a surprisingly modern complaint. So haben wir doch massive Verkalkungen im Bereich der Hauptschlagader im Bauch gefunden, also der Aorta, wir haben massive Verkalkungen im Bereich der gehirnversorgenden Arterien gefunden, aber man kann es glaube ich nur in dieser Weise interpretieren, dass es eben Fettablagerungen in den Gefäßwänden ge äh, gegeben hat, die dann zu Verkalkungen geführt haben, also irgendein Stoffwechsel, Erkrankung, erhöhtes Cholesterin, äh, was auch immer. But these third arteries turned out to be less surprising when tiny samples of bone were sent away for analysis sind Untersuchungen am Knochen durchgeführt worden. Man hat äh, Mikropräparate hergestellt und die Struktur der Osteone betrachtet und ausgewertet. Daraus ergibt sich ein sogar noch etwas höheres Alter. Die Anthropologen sind der Ansicht, dass der Mann ne, ein Lebensalter von etwa 45 Jahren erreicht hat, also wirklich im hohen Alter gewesen ist. But following up on clues like this has proved difficult for the researchers at Innsbruck University. Trying to use an endoscope on a crushed, frozen body isn't easy. But they have managed to obtain stomach samples which confirm that his last meal was meat and rough milled corn. Other questions still remain, like how he came to have broken ribs. Es ist ohne weiteres möglich, dass vielleicht zwei Wochen, drei Wochen vor seinem Tod irgendein Unfall passiert ist, wo die Rippen gebrochen sind. Es kann aber genauso gut sein, dass während der Bergung oder im Laufe der vielen tausend Jahre durch den Eisdruck diese Rippen gebrochen sind. Wir können nur sagen, das sind Frakturen. Es sind auf einer Seite mehr, fünf oder sechs übereinander, die nicht knöchern verheilt sind. To answer this, they need to analyze a piece of rib. Das Problem, das sich dabei ergibt, ist, dass man etwa ein 1 bis 2 cm langes Knochenstück braucht. Und wir kaum die Erlaubnis bekommen werden, ein so großes äh, Knochenstück äh, der Mumie zu entnehmen. But scientists have found another way of studying his health without touching his body. When the washings were collected in 1992, archaeologists found strands of the Iceman's hair. These were to reveal an extraordinary detail about his life. At Oxford University, researchers used a machine called a proton microprobe to measure different elements contained within the hair. The hairs are about 100 microns in width, and our beam can be focused to a spot size of about one micron. So you still have about um, 100 slots that you can sample over across the length of the hairs. We found copper particles on the surface, and uh, when we sliced the hair, we found that the copper was indeed localized quite strongly on the surface of the hair. And we also found arsenic, which mm. is equally unusual, and that's I'm not a traditionally, um, that's not I'm found in normal human hair to, to the detection limits of our instrument. We can't, you don't usually see any arsenic. So his hair was covered in copper and contained arsenic levels normally associated with chronic arsenic poisoning. But there was a problem.
As he and his equipment became frozen to the rocks, he could have become contaminated with trace elements from the soil around. So the Oxford team had to carry out the same tests on deer hair from his artefacts. If you assume that the basic structure of the deer hair and human hair is uh, similar, then any contaminants in the em local environment would, would be absorbed equally by the deer hair and the, um, and the human hair. But in fact we found that uh, the deer hair was contained relatively small levels of copper and no arsenic. These are unusually high copper levels for natural contamination. He would have had to have been buried in the outflow from a copper mine or something to have obtained copper levels like this. I haven't seen anything like this in any other modern or archaeological hair that we've analysed. And certainly the fact that his deer hair doesn't have this, these, same sort of, these same peaks That's of copper right, yes. indicates that uh, this is something that was particular to him during his life and not so much contamination after he was buried. If the Iceman was exposed to high levels of arsenic and copper during his lifetime, there was only one source, smelting copper ore, which produces arsenic vapor. His copper axe has had more impact than any other item found with him, and his hair samples suggest he had the skills to make it. But that means he would have to find it, mine it, smelt it, and cast it. Before the Iceman, there was no evidence of a copper industry 5,000 years ago in the Alps. Since his discovery, researchers have gone back to reinterpret other archaeological sites. Could these unassuming dips be remnants of open cast mining from the Iceman's time? An ebenen Stellen is eben infolge der Erosion das Gestein zerrüttet und deswegen konnte man es wahrscheinlich leichter abtragen. Als, als den festen Felsen und hat sicher zunächst dort begonnen. Man hat mit Sicherheit den Malachit gefunden, das grüne erzhältige Gestein als Hinweis auf das Kupfer. In itself, the presence of green copper ore doesn't prove this was a mining site, but some large round stones found nearby were more revealing. Die Steinschläge, die man hier also auf den Halden findet, Die haben immer ein ganz typisches Aussehen, nämlich die Rille oder Kerben und sie sind an einer Stelle abgeflacht. The answer to these strange markings lay in reconstructive archaeology. Ja, um nachzuvollziehen, wie sie zu der Zeit gearbeitet haben, äh, muss man die Steinschläge und Äxte selber bauen und machen, bearbeiten. By making hammers out of these stones, they could recreate the same notches and grooves. These were ancient mining tools. There is now increasing evidence there was plenty of copper mining in the Iceman's time. Es wird wahnsinnig viel geforscht in den in den letzten Jahren und es werden überall Bergwerke entdeckt aus dieser Zeit. Reconstructing 5,000-year-old smelting, however, is not easy. I try to smelt copper from a copper ore, from malachite and copper oxide. Uh, in a crucible, uh, its shape was used in Neolithic time. We have very good examples. One problem is maintaining the high temperatures needed to melt copper ore. The most dangerous thing for casting copper is to have too much oxygen in it, for you can hammer it, sharpen it. Even when it is very soft, it will break, weakened by the inclusions of copper oxide. And this is the problem of the ancient copper caster. Of course, you can skip all this hard work and use a modern furnace to achieve the liquid copper. At Sheffield University, they have concentrated on the next stage, casting the axe head. We are trying to get a copper axe, because this is based on this wooden model, and the wooden model is based exactly on Iceman's axe. We are setting it in a two-part mold of sand. Of course, what you see here, the metal frame would not have been used. It would have been a wooden frame or a wicker basket or something like this. All the tools that you've seen here would have been different. So we are compromising material. But in principle, the result would have been the same for the Iceman as it is for us.
this liquid, you see here. of let me say 20 experiments and the Iceman or his craftsman he knew this for some hundred times yes this is the big difference I think yes this is what the final object would have looked like all the ones that have entered archaeological record have been polished now that is a lot of elbow grease with sandstone first of all to get the smooth surface off and then with sand and water and you end up with a beautiful axe like this. Despite its age, the real axe head can still draw admirers. Really, it is a very beautiful blade. I had in the museums of Europe about 100 pieces and this is one of the most beautiful pieces I saw. Closer examination has also revealed how good the Iceman was at casting copper. It has a very distinctive kink at the top, which is obviously a casting fault. And anyone who would see it without a half would recognize and say, ah, oh, yeah, this was Betsy's axe. Every chip and scrape on its surface means something to the expert eye. It has been used and it has been three times re-hammered for sharpening. This I can conclude from the very weak, very tiny uh, widening of, of the blade here. If you hammer the blade, the, the angles, the sides will be a little bit widened. There is, however, a lot of argument about what such an axe meant to the Iceman. How practical was a soft copper axe? Also, I personally would a copper axe and a flint axe. We have both tried. The copper axe splits not. It lets sich leichter schäften. Und uh, wenn irgendein Cut drin ist, man kann sie nachschmieden. Das geht bei der Flintaxe nicht, das die zerbricht. This stone axe has a broader angle. And you have seen that I can't do this here because uh, it doesn't go in, because the angle is very wide here. And so I have to work in a, in a very flat angle. So. But this is uh, copper, and you see the angle is uh, much uh, thinner than uh, the stone axe, and there, so I can go deeper in. It couldn't have been used for any length of time because a copper axe like that is too soft. It would, it would, would bend over um, after 20 minutes without uh, hardening, without being alloyed. You can see it on this one. These are experimental axes. You have to ignore the large things, but if you look at that section here, it bends over like this after half an hour use. So it couldn't have been entirely for hard use. It must have been also a multi-purpose tool. I think experiments have shown that in fact, again in practical terms, there aren't that many big differences in terms of the amount of use that one can get out of these materials. I think the differences may have much more to do with the meaning or significance that people attributed to metal as opposed to stone. Among the picture stones there is a clue to the axe's significance. sono praticamente identiche a quelle che noi abbiamo trovato vicino all'uomo del Similao. Io 
credo che questo tipo di asce hanno senz'altro un significato particolare perché dovevano rivestire per la società di allora, dovevano rappresentare una specie di status symbol. Ma l'idea del symbolismo è rejected by some archaeologists. Die Ansicht, dass es sich um eine Art Kultbeil, um eine Art Statussymbol handelt, kann mittlerweile zu den Akten gelegt werden. Es haben exakte metallografische Untersuchungen am Gussmetall des Beiles stattgefunden. Das Beil bildet einen vorzüglichen Gegenstand. Man kann es als Werkzeug, man kann es als Waffe benutzen. If as archaeologists all we can say is this is an axe and it's made of copper then really we're saying so little. We're saying nothing about human history, nothing about personalities, nothing about the nature of, so of society at the time. Can you imagine what it would be like to see one for the first time? I mean, the way these things catch the light, not only would this have been dramatic, but also it would have been mysterious. You may not know where it came from, and you may not know how it was made. The technology, the knowledge required, may have been restricted magic, it may have been sacred knowledge. From the moment of his discovery, there was a theory that the Iceman was some kind of priest or shaman. High places have always been sacred in ancient religions. Perhaps he died performing some ritual on the mountains. The discovery of strange markings on his body seemed to support that belief. If you look at his um, right lower leg, at the ankle, there were three tattooed lines. Uh, looking farther, further up here, there are three lines being here. And actually these lines were discovered by using infrared photography. If you look at his back, there are some tattoos that were found on the left side of the back. And these tattoos were at locations where he could not see them himself. So somebody else must have applied them. Mysterious though they are, archaeologists now think these marks symbolize no more than painful joints. Climbing creates very great tension on the legs. So uh, that occasionally may have experienced pain in slow legs, that's quite sure. Insgesamt kennen wir mittlerweile 57 verschiedene Tätowierungen am Körper des uh, Eismannes und Wir wissen auch von Naturvölkern, dass man Tätowierungen nicht nur zum Schmuck oder als Abzeichen verwendet hat, sondern auch zur Therapie. Es gibt Völker, die schmerzende Stellen, um den Schmerz zu lindern, tätowieren oder auch um Heilwirkungen hervorzurufen. Und das müssen wir auch beim Gletschermann annehmen, denn die röntgenologischen Untersuchungen gerade an diesen Gelenken haben gezeigt, dass dort bereits diskrete bis mittlere arthrotische Veränderungen vorliegen. Nowadays, few scientists think he was a shaman. But what was he doing then at the top of a mountain? After all the research, most archaeologists agree with what the locals in South Tyrol thought all along. The Iceman was found at the end of a long valley that pushes north from the plains of Italy. Every spring, local shepherds drive their flocks up this valley and over the high pass to the summer pastures in the north. Im Süden ist es sehr oft sehr trocken ist und da hat man das schon seit Jahrhunderten so gemacht, dass man im Hochsommer mit dem Vieh, mit den Schafen oder Ziegen nach Norden gegangen ist dann wieder zurückheben im Herbst. Und so wird das auch jetzt noch gemacht und wahrscheinlich war das auch zu Ötzi seiner Zeit so, so gewesen. The route the sheep take today passes far from the place where the Iceman died. But this path was only made in the last century with dynamite. The ancient route would have taken them right past his body. The Iceman could well have died tending his flock. It 
seems inconceivable, but this tradition is probably more ancient than the Egyptian empire. Today, South Tyrolians are proud of the Iceman, and his future is settled. When the Austrians hand him over, he will be housed in this converted bank. Unfortunately, there are still... Sono un antropologo, per me questa mummia, prima ancora di essere eh, un uomo, è i resti e tutto quello che abbiamo dei nostri antenati. E quindi è per questo che merita di essere vista. Ich halte das aus ethischen und moralischen Gründen für nicht äh, vertretbar. Das äh, sind antiquierte Vorstellungen, dass man eben aus Sensationsmacherei Mumien zeigt. Äh, mit der Würde des Menschen ist das nicht vereinbar. Wenn es denn äh, sein sollte, dass man die Mumie zeigen will, dann am ehesten als äh, Replik. But on one thing, as scientists, they can agree. Per definizione uno studio scientifico non è mai finito e questa è la ragione che ci obbliga a conservare bene questo reperto. Aus äh, meiner Sicht äh, werden äh, die Forschungen am Mann im Eis niemals enden, denn äh, die Wissenschaft entwickelt neue Methoden, es äh, gibt äh, neue Forschungsansätze und äh, die äh, Kollegen in äh, 10, 20 oder in 50 Jahren werden noch genügend am Eismann zu untersuchen haben. The future has already arrived at Innsbruck. The very latest imaging system is being used to turn 5000 CAT scans into a 3D model of the Iceman. It is a whole new way of studying his body without damaging it. And already Professor Zernedin has more questions. Wir sehen auch hier zum Beispiel, wenn wir da stehen bleiben, eine, eine Region im Gehirn, die eine ganz andere Dichte hat. Was immer das bedeutet, ob das jetzt äh, durch die Schrumpfung basiert ist, ob da möglicherweise eine Gefäßläsion war, äh, das könnte man natürlich erst durch eine Organentnahme machen, aber. Did he suffer a stroke? The whole question of how he died remains the biggest mystery around the Iceman. There are no fatal wounds on his body, but maybe his own fickle mountain home proved his undoing. Ja, ziemlich schnell sich ändern kann, Kaltfronten und so. Also dass es innerhalb von ein, zwei Stunden 10 bis 15 Grad kälter werden kann oder neblig auch und man sehr schnell die Orientierung verliert. Im Nebelleben ist mir selber auch so gegangen. Ich bin ja hier schon seit 16 Jahren immer jedes Jahr auf der Hütte. Ich bin diesen, diesen Weg auf die Hütte sicher schon einige hundert Mal gegangen. Und mir ist selber schon passiert, dass ich im Nebel die, die eigene Hütte nicht gefunden habe. He knew the area very well. And he, when he came here, he had placed his equipment very nicely at different spots. And he knew where he was putting them. And when you get into fog, the only thing you have to do is just to try to wait for the fog to dissipate. Perhaps 5,000 years ago, the people of his local village knew all too well what happened. It is a little tragedy what happened, but very often it happened. The ice is full of people who have fallen down the mountains or they died there. That's an old story. Late in the year, an old and experienced member of the village set out from the safety of the valleys to cross the high mountains. He stopped for a rest at a familiar point. When he arrived that little valley, he sat down and then he made a fire. But then something happens. He couldn't 
escape there because it was dark and he can't uh, find a way in the darkness and during the snow. So he has to wait until the snowstorm was over. But it didn't stop. He waited. All his firewood was gone and he was afraid himself. He knew that when he will uh, fell asleep he will be dead because then he will be killed by frost and ice. Then it happened. He fell asleep. And that was the last time he fell asleep. Maybe there was a family in the valleys who cried uh, after his death about him because he didn't come back. If you'd like a special booklet including transcripts of all three Ice Mummies programmes, please send a cheque for £4.95, payable to BSS, to Horizon Ice Mummies, PO Box 7, London W5 2GQ. This boy is over 500 years old, yet his body is perfectly preserved. He is one of the child sacrifices found high in the Andes. Their bodies reveal clues to a past civilization obsessed with human sacrifice. Ice Mummies, the last in the Horizon Trilogy, next Thursday, 9.25, BBC Two.